Hi and welcome back to Mike Makes It. You've seen already what we're going to make. Now I'll show you the parts you're going to need. Picture frame, I got these from Amazon, probably Boots or any local um, hardware storage sell these. This is a shadow box uh, picture frame. That's what they call a shadow box. It's got a little bit of depth to it. Uh, there's one I've already opened up here. Might make it a little bit clearer. You can see there's a border on the inside. So where the screen is going to sit, behind this cardboard frame, it's going to look as if it's about uh, three quarters of an inch behind the glass. It really does pop. It really does make it look uh, stand out. The display stands out very well. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, this is Raspberry Pi Zero W. You need uh, the, the Wi-Fi on it. Uh, you could use another Raspberry Pi if you want, but this is a nice, small, cheap way of doing it. Uh, a few nuts and bolts. But the main part of the, 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 this um, project is a WaveShare 7.5 inch, three color e-ink display. They're about £76 at the moment on Amazon. Make sure you get the hat version. I think it's Model B. I'll put all the links in the description. But the idea of the hat, this is a little printed circuit board that comes with the WaveShare display. That will plug straight on to the back of your Raspberry Pi, so it's a con uh, contained unit. You don't have to, um, very convenient if you do. You also get a cable here. Uh, if you don't want to plug it on your Raspberry Pi for some reason, you can configure it in there, plug it in there. And I was using this in my um, keyboard type Raspberry Pi, the 400. Let me just show you that. I'm sure you know what I'm on about. One of these things, it just plugs in the port in the back. So I use that for programming the, the SD card up, micro SD card. But let's move this a little bit of hardware out of the way. A few nuts and bolts as well. All right, we'll get the display out of the box. Very fragile, so be careful with it. Bit of aluminium, glass, electronics, etc. Very thin, very fragile. Uh, so the idea of the shadow box, you've got a piece of card that comes in the box itself where normally you'd fit a photograph behind. Now, what I'm going to do is fit the display behind the cardboard. Uh, the cardboard needs trimming a bit. As you can see, the display is bigger than the hole in the card, but that's not a problem. Trim that a bit. Nice sharp uh, utility knife. Then I'm going to centralise it and affix the display to the card, just with masking tape, just around the edge. I'll be fine. There's no weight to the display. It's not going to pull out. So that should be good. The whole idea of this it fits in the shadow box I keep going on about to give you some depth so what we end up with is an electronic sandwich you're gonna have the card Let's see if we can get that sitting in there you'll have the display then in a few moments I'm going to go to the garage and here is where I'm going to mount the Raspberry Pi Zero W four holes on it goes and here you're gonna have a slot for this ribbon cable to stick out of. So you're gonna end up with a bit of a sandwich, like so. So if we turn it over gently, you can see the depth we got. It's about three quarters of an inch from the glass to the back of the display. And that'll look really nice, that'll pop quite well. You could use a flat frame, I guess, um, but I think this'll give more effect. So off I'll go, off to the garage, make a few holes, get the masking tape out and I'll come back and show you uh, how far we got so far. Okay, this is the back panel from the picture frame. I've done some approximate marks where I want to drill out. Uh, that's for the ribbon coming out from the screen. Here, four holes for the Raspberry Pi. They haven't got to be absolutely precise. Um, clearly, the bolts have got to be fit, th fit through those holes, and they've got to be close enough. But we'll give this a little go, see how it, uh, how it all goes. Right, four holes in there. I'm going to use this type of bolt with a um, countersunk head. Because basically I want to drive them in from this side and have them sitting flush. Because on here I'm going to mount the uh, e-ink display. So I want them flush, I don't want them sticky out kind of thing. So four bolts will be coming up here. Uh, look in the little 
tub I have. I'm going to use some of these plastic pillars and they're subsequently um, will attach to the Raspberry Pi. So what I need to do now, open these holes up a little bit, kind of sink them on that side. Um, before we do that though, I want to cut this slot for the ribbon cable. So I'm going to change the drill bit in here uh, to one of these. I've not used it before. Not quite an end mill. But um, I should be able to drag it sideways and sort of cut a bit of a channel out. Not sure how neat it's going to be. You're not going to see it. It's going to be on the back. But obviously the better you can get it, the, the better. So uh, we'll see how we get on with that. Right, the, the bit's in there. We'll give it a shot. Um, I could possibly come back with a Stanley knife. I've used this before on the other display I made. Probably going to be a neater way. But we'll, we'll give it a go. I've not used this before, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Better than I thought, to be honest. I've got to clean it up now with a little file, but uh, that's quite quick and easy. And I haven't cut my hands, so get that done, and we'll go back up on the bench. Right there, we go. Back from the garage, got four holes put in, slot for the display, counter sunk four holes there. So let's get putting it together. All the bits and pieces are available from Banggood, Amazon, any good hardware store, really. But um, these are the plastic units I bought from Banggood. There's different sized pillars and screws and bits and bobs in there. So that's all good. Now we turn this over. The screws will stay in place. I'm going to put these on first. Screw them onto the screws. Just finger tight will do. Four of those, one each corner of the pie. Then we're going to slide the pie onto those screws. Then put a couple of pillars or one pillar on each of these uh, to give a good space in between the pie hat and the pie itself. You've got an inductor on the back of this. There. And it does stick up a little bit. So you don't want this going too close. I damaged one, so uh, I know you can cause issues because you'll have a bit of this going on and it can crush the inductor so a decent sized space between the two boards and uh, it's all good so anyway look put these on loose if my holes are right these should just slip over it's fairly good there we go and that's seated down now onto the pillars as you can see hopefully that's coming out there you go just a little bit more there. Now, putting the straight through pillar, that's threaded all the way through. And screw those on there. Hold on a moment. I have that back to front. It would work that way. But the way I was planning, having the board that way round, then the USB power drapes down because this is the bottom of the frame. I want the power cable to come down. Uh, it wouldn't make any difference. You could put it the other way around. Uh, I think you'll find though the hat is also better this way because the cable drapes down. So any which way you want, but that is the way I would do it the second time. So same again, holes haven't moved. Just seat that down. Put 
get these pillars on. Now with Banggood, with a set of screws and bolts and bits and bobs you get, these pillars, some of these are different heights, so make sure you select the right height to suit the distance or the spacing. But it's all straightforward. You could get it, even get away without putting these on. There's no weight to the pie hat, so it's not going to rip off. But I like doing it like this. I think it's better. Right, pie hat. If you're not careful, you could offset it one. A little bit difficult now we put the pillars in. But, you know, just be aware there's no ident, no pin to stop you putting it the wrong way around. See that's all lined up there? Gently squeeze both sides together. And there you go. Let's see if we can get sideways on that. Nice little bit of spacing going on. So what we'll do now, plastic bolt, one each corner. Just finishes the job really. As I said earlier, you haven't got to put this on a, a pie uh, directly. You can use the cable that comes with it this cable and use the individual pins on the pie but there's only a few pound difference in having the model be with a hat or without so uh, it, you know it seems logical to get the hat and just slide straight on it'll fit on a, a pie 3 or a pie 4 as well directly like this it just this is made for the pie 0 well that's on there now that's all nice um, now the plan is I'm going to route this cable down to this slot that's where the display flexi comes out. So it's going to end up with something like that. Now I may use a bit of double-sided sticky tape or hot hot melt glue. I know it's not the favourite, certainly not for mounting this with hot melt glue, although it would work. It's either double-sided sticky or, or a dab of hot melt glue through there. But what I've got to do now, move the map out of the way. This is a cardboard insert that comes with the picture frame. Now... If we, bring over the display <clears throat> the active display if you want to call it that is anything that's slightly darker grey you can see around the border let's get that into focus this is not active this part all the way around the display it's only the interior the darker grey which is active so what I want to do as you'll see here the display is bigger than the hole that's already pre-cut. So I need to cut a little bit off the sides and the top and bottom. So what I'm going to do is um, measure the active size of the display, come in about a millimetre either side um, of the measurements and cut this open in accordingly. So I'll go and do that off camera and uh, come back to you when the e-screen, e-ink display I should say, is mounted on the back. Now I'm probably just going to use tape to hold that on because as with most of the projects maybe I want to do something else with this screen uh, in a year's time perhaps. So rather than having to buy another one I can dismantle this project um, if I'm no longer using it. Now before you mount this display though, be careful because it is basically a thin piece of glass with uh, some electronics stuck on it. There's a tab like with iPhones, if you get a new display on it, there's a protective screen. So make sure you take the protective screen off this before you're mounted to that. So once that's on there, um, we'll fire it up. I'll put the SD card, the micro SD card in the Pi and show you the display here. And I'll go over briefly the software. Dead easy. So uh, yeah, a few minutes, I'll be back. All right, there you go. That's the display mounted in the card that came with the picture frame. Just use a bit of masking tape on the back to hold it in place. Absolutely fine for this application. Um, we can pretty much fix it into the frame now. One bit of advice, so give the glass a good clean. Um, on all the picture frames I've had so far, they, they turn up very dirty. So, the card goes in here. Just be careful of the flexi strip here. Hold that up out the way. That sits in. Now we just hold that and I'll turn it round for you. See the depth? 
that, that'll look nice. So, right, now we've got to try to put the back on. There's a little bit of wibbly wobbly in here, so uh, perhaps hold it to the bottom so it's just, gravity's going to pull it down. Hopefully, I've cut the hole correct for the ribbon here. We'll see. If we haven't, there's going to be a retake. But um, I think we're fairly good. We'll see, won't we? I've just got to hook it under the staples that come with it on the picture frame. Again, there's a bit of give here. I just got it on the top of the frame, just off shot. The metal staples just need to be pulled up out the way. That's one. Two. And there's, there you go. There's a ribbon cable coming out the back. So that worked okay. I'm going to push these staples down at the top. Don't want to really put that much pressure on the frame itself. Just enough to hold the wood in the back, the MDF. So we've done that. I am going to use a little bit of hot melt glue to bond this to uh, the board there. So while that's warming up, I'll just work out where this is going to go, the ribbon cable, how we're going to fold it in. So we'll do that. Two seconds, I'll come back. I've attached the flexi strip to the header card and I put a dab of hot melt glue on the back of it. Um, quite secure, it's not going to go anywhere. And at the moment, I've decided to just leave that cable like it is because this ultimately is going to hang up, or not hang up, but it's going to sit on a mantelpiece somewhere like so. So this isn't really going to hurt. If I thought it was going to get caught up on something, then what I may have done is bonded it to the board and folded the cable. But for now, I'm going to leave it like that. I've put the SD card in, micro SD cards in the Raspberry Pi Zero. It's already programmed up, and we'll come back to that in a second, how we get it programmed up. Um, power into it. Power is the, the far right-hand side as we look at it, USB connector not the one in the middle. So we'll pop that in. Now with a Pi Zero, it ain't the quickest animal, so it's going to take a few minutes to boot up. But let's turn it back round and I'll position the camera so you can see it. I may fast forward this. Right, there we go. The Pi Zero does take a while. On the 400 I was using, it's probably 30 seconds and it's up and running. But, yeah, you watch. Bear with me. Or bear with the pie, I should say. But that flickering is, is basically the display has been initialized. It is important it gets refreshed at least every 24 hours according to WaveShare. Uh, I've set the software up so it'll reboot or reinitialize the screen every uh, eight hours in the day and it'll update time and date logo on the screen so you know if it's actually uh, done it and it's not hung up on you. Nearly there. There you have it. You see the last bit, it went a little bit whiter. Let me see if we can get it on a shot for you. Um, well, there you go. Um, the full description, how to, sop the set, how to set the software up, is on my Google Drive. I'm not going to try to tell you how to do it um, sort of over on YouTube. Pull down the, the file. It is very well described. Everything you need to know is there. And it's a very quick setup. We do need to follow it to the letter, and you'll end up with a display like this. Not when Mike makes it on, it's with your logo um, and your name. Uh, there's a few things you've got to set up, but as I say, it's fully described in the software. Very easy to do. Um, and down in the bottom right here, uh, I have slightly gone off because I've cut the cardboard, a, not, I could have gone a little bit bigger. Let's see if we can zoom in. But uh, it's 22nd of the 10th. 2021 at 18:27 and 50 seconds this 
rebooted uh, and it will reboot every eight hours. You can alter the, the hours, it particularly reboots, but I've done it every eight hours, so you're well within uh, the wave share spec of 24 hours a day. I think the idea, if you don't reboot it, you might get a burn in on the display and you don't want that to happen. But yeah, I think, you see the depth of field there using the shadow box? Very, very nice. If you've got any queries, by all means, um, contact me through YouTube. But really, so long as you follow the description of how to set the software up on the Raspberry Pi and how, we, how I built it here, you have absolutely no problem. I, it's foolproof. I've gone over it and over it and over it just to make sure there's no mistakes and it's spot on. So hopefully um, you won't have any problems with this. In the description, there'll be uh, locations of where I bought the parts, a reference to who I had this idea off in the first place. Um, and feel free to leave comments, uh, good or bad. Uh, tell me how you think um, this actual project went because there's going to be more using these um, WaveShare displays, I believe, in the future. Uh, you get them in all different sizes. I think I've got a couple in the cupboard. I'm just looking over there. A uh, 1.8 and a 2.1 inch display, just black and white, but uh, it could be a little project in the, in the pipeline. But there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it enjoyable. If you have, by all means, subscribe. Thumbs up would be great. But yeah, go on, uh, buy bits and pieces and make one of these.